Welcome everybody to the Edgewalker Cafe, February 15th, 2024. And I am so happy you're here with us. Um, our community is growing, it's building. It's um, such a time where those of us who have a real calling to live our deepest purpose and our deepest sense of spirituality in a way that makes impact on the world, often we feel like we're the only ones. But when we find that there's others who care and who are living their deepest values and practices, they make such a difference and we come together and give each other courage and um, the you know the knowing that even though others might call us crazy, that we are uh, able to support each other in community and make the kind of difference we're meant to make. So a lot of what we're talking about today has to do with purpose and calling. And I'm going to turn it over to my beloved friend and senior associate at Edgewalkers International, Patricia Campanile who has been with Edgewalkers like from the very beginning and even while the book was being written. Right. <laughs> and uh, and you've done so much, Patricia, to help us grow our community and to bring in wonderful speakers like Bernadette Logue that we have with us today. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Judy. And um, thank you for uh, being our leader in holding the vision and, and really ultimately starting and creating the space for this very important work. So hello everybody and welcome. My name is Patricia Campanile and as Judy said, I'm a senior edge walker, facilitator, associate and coach and I'm really honored to be and excited to be hosting this edge walker cafe today. Um, Bernadette Logue and I met on an email when I was living in Maui oh my gosh, 12 or 13 years ago. And we had this connection on an email that was so strong through the email that we were, we've been just really close soul friends and colleagues and um, ever since. So I'm really excited to have her here today. So today's topic is called Your Soul's Calling, the courage to step up and stand out where it counts. And I am going to really turn this over to Bernadette Logue, who's a spiritual coach and an author and have her start out by introducing herself and centering us before we get into our very inspiring um, dialogue today. So Bernadette, welcome and thank you and everyone for being here with us today. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Um, obviously, you are a very dear friend of mine, and I'm excited to connect with your community. And I know there's some people from my community here. So uh, as you said, I've been a spiritual life coach for about 12 years. I'm from New, New Zealand originally, but have lived nomadically around the world for the last decade or so, and um, have a really deep passion for this topic in particular, being aligned with our soul. Wonderful. And and so before we do a deep dive into this topic, can we um, do some type of centering just to bring us all together? To bring our Perfect. energy together and um, everyone's been coming from somewhere so it will be good to Beautiful. Um, do that thank you okay let's do that we're going to do a little thing that i like to do with my soul odyssey community sometimes when we come into a group session like this to really get connected to the fact that we are spirit in our body and sometimes in our daily life we all have stuff going on we have big emotions we have a lot of mind noise we've got life challenges we've got aspirations some of you have just woken up and come here. Some of you have had a big busy day. So we're going to drop in and really connect with who we truly are. So that as we listen to the session today, we can be present as the spirits we are with bodies and minds, not showing up as our minds and bodies trying to figure out <laughs> what our spirit's about. So mm -hmm. we're going to close our eyes first. It's going to be a little bit um, physical and embodied. So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to put two hands on your heart. And with our eyes closed, we're not going to breathe with our lungs, we're going to breathe with our heart center. Knowing that our heart center is where the intelligence is and where the energy of life is funneling in and out of our being. And so we're just gonna silently take three breaths in and out, breathing with our heart. So breathe in. And breathe out. 
and breathe into your heart. And breathe out. And again, breathe into your heart and breathe out. And now I want you to take, with your eyes closed still, I want you to take one of your hands and I want you to place your two fingers, your index finger and your middle finger, I want you to place it on your pulse on the wrist or on your neck. You've got a pulse point where you can feel your heart beating. And with your eyes closed, I want you to feel your heartbeat. And we're just going to sit for 10, 15 seconds and feel the beat of your heart. And now I want you to acknowledge inside yourself that you are not here randomly on this planet inside this body. What is beating your heart? What is breathing your body? What you're sensing in the energy that is beating your heart and breathing your body is divine. It is otherworldly. It is the spirit you are and the source that you come from. And what is beating your heart is beating my heart and is beating the heart of every person here. And I just want you to repeat to yourself as we sit here with our eyes closed, I am a soul. I am here for good reason. My life has deep purpose. And I choose to walk my soul's calling. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And we can begin to have a juicy, juicy conversation. <laughs> Oh, that was so beautiful, Bernadette. Thank you. And um, you're welcome. A reminder of who we really are. And I know when we spoke the other day, uh, I was curious about the reason of, of all the topics, because I've been wanting to have you on Edgeworker Cafe for some time. What compelled you to speak about this topic today? What is calling you? What is the message that you have for us today? What is the invitation? Hmm. Okay, so um, I'm going to give you what's coming through in the moment. Okay, okay. so we've talked about some things we're going to talk about, but I spoke on many topics for many years on a wide array of topics. And in late 2022, Spirit said, no, focus. This is the work. This is the message. And when I received that, that it is your soul's calling, it is your purpose, it is your connection to who you really are, and it is waking up inside the dream of life to remember your soul nature and your divine nature and why you're here. When I got that message, I was like, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And we get very distracted with all of these other things that we can end up talking about. And so for the last 18 months, my message has deeply gone into this space and essentially this space alone. And then how that flows out into all the areas of our life, being that the common denominator in your life of everything you're challenged by and everything you want to experience and achieve and your contentment and peace is all stemming from you, but not your mind or body, but from the spirit that you are that is ever seeking to express through you. And the only thing we need to be aware of is we have to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. And so it's this dance of my soul self and my personality self, which I call the small self, and the soul and source wants to constantly be expressing through us, and then our little self can get in the way sometimes, and so we want to attune to our soul's calling, that's one, but two is having the courage to get out of the way and like be in alignment with that, and the greatest thing that I see from over a decade of doing this work, and whether I'm talking to people who are atheists or Buddhists or religious or spiritual or whatever it is, whether we're talking about work problems or money problems or relationship or health, is that our small self gets in the way and there is there are fears, there are anxieties, there are doubts, there are question marks, and ultimately courage is essential to walk into, as I say, out on a limb, as you say, out on an edge, mm -hmm. uh, on the edge of the leading edge of your life, 
to meet life at its edge into new frontiers, you have to have courage. Mm -hmm. And and you and I both know that, and other people here will know, that courage, as the quote says, is not the absence of fear, which I think is um, a Theodore Roosevelt or Franklin Roosevelt. I can't remember who said it, but there is a courage is not the absence of fear. Do not wait till there is no anxiety, fear, doubt, or question marks. That is not going to happen. We will be waiting a wholly long time. Right. What we have to understand is that these are aspects of who we are. And actually, when you step into courage and you step into your soul's calling, whatever it is, micro or macro, the fear comes with you and you're meant to step into it because it is in the doing of that that the fear starts to dissipate. So there is no point on my journey where there has not been fear as I've moved into all the unknowns. It's not like, oh, that person got fearless <laughs> and did the things. The, right? fearless, uh, the fearlessness comes from actually, the strength and the fearlessness comes from the actual action of moving through it. And that's where, mm -hmm. and, the, and the wisdom and that. But what I'm, what I'm curious about, and I, I know the answer for myself, but from your perspective, um, many of us, I think on this call can understand that, but what is the fear about? Like, like mm -hmm. we know, I think most of us wanna have more inner freedom. We wanna be aligned with our soul calling. We wanna be open-hearted. We wanna be connected to our higher purpose. What, I realize it's our small self, but what is the actual fear, would you say? What, or what is the challenge and opportunity in that? Okay, really good. Okay, so on one hand, this, this whole aspect of fear is really important to understand. You are a spiritual being, but you cannot escape your psychology and your primitive physiology. Mm -hmm. Right. If you try to if you try to divorce spirituality from physicality and psychology, you're going to have a really rough road. And that's where I see people spiritualizing their way through life, but they do not understand their nervous system. They do not understand their psychological wiring and their conditioning. So you're fighting against your own self and it feels like a war inside. Mm -hmm. I've got the soul calling, but I've got the fear, but this, but that. And when you understand that the fear comes from a couple of primitive things, as human beings, we are like innately wired to be in connection. Mm -hmm. to be accepted, to want bonding and to want love. So if you say or do something that is counter to the norm, if you choose a path that is counter to the, to society's messages, to your family messaging, to your friend group, to whatever, you are essentially at a level of practicality going in a different direction. Right. That is, from a primitive point of view, I'm out on the edge. I'm out on a limb. I'm going against the norm. Will I be rejected? Will I be accepted? Will I be bonded? Will I be ju judged? What will people think of me? Will and I so we alone? have this. I think a lot will of I people, be alone? Will I be alone? You know, will I be misunderstood? It's a, where it's a threat to the people, it can be, who are not yes. on a shared path or a similar path. Yes. And so from that primitive point of view, when you understand that's what your body and your subconscious are trying to protect you, your subconscious has one job and one job alone, and it is to keep you safe and keep you alive. So if you have any conditioning that says that I must be accepted by people and I cannot be at odds with people and I cannot risk judgment, everything about you will sabotage you to keep you small so that you don't risk yourself being put in the, in the face of those dangers. And one of the things that the, one of the reasons this topic came up when you and I were chatting on just having a friend chat on, on right. our WhatsApp the other day was that it's really become clear to me that if you're going to evolve into truly blossoming as your soul, soulful true being, there are times when it is going to require you to speak your truth that is counter to your own partner, that is counter to your children, that is counter to your friend group, that's counter to your peers, mm -hmm. not to be counter but to be true in you. To yourself. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And what that often means is, is that there are always small micro opportunities to be doing that on a daily basis, but there are particular pivot points in your life where it starts to feel really uncomfortable because your soul is bigger than your small self and it is not having it anymore. And it wants expansion and it wants quickening and it wants to start to go in a different direction. And that's going to rattle the cages a little bit of you and your familiar life. And the other reason the fear comes up is unfamiliar, uncertain, unknown. Right. I don't know where this is going. I know what I don't want, but I don't know exactly where this is going. 
Right. And that can and be so scary for the unknown and uncertainty for a lot of people. And yet they know they can't stay where they've been. They know that something is calling them to the next level, next place, next expression, whatever is what I hear you exactly. say. Exactly. So so the evolution, the the blossoming can be um, I want to blossom into something greater, or it can be something in my life is breaking down. Mm -hmm. It can be either. And they're the same thing something's breaking down so it can reformulate or there is a like a growth required from where you stand the courage comes to say in the face of my comfortable life in the face of my comfortable and being in agreement with everybody and being the person people think I am partnership children friends family workplace whatever it is um, how do I be truly authentic to discover this soul, this expanding soulful aspect of who I am? And and sometimes it means people don't come with you. Right. That's, exactly. that's, the, that's the hard truth. You know, um, I wanna, and, yeah, I want to share something really quickly. I had a very wise older friend who died at 90. I've told you about her, Yona in Maui. And you know what's on her tombstone? To thine own self be true. It's literally her tombstone. I know like I've, I've told you that, but that was, she was so out of the box, so kind of eccentric and outrageous, but she died, you know, being the outrageous, eccentric, soulful healer person that she was. And what a thing to take with you. You know, it's a journey for all of us when you go. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, you know, to share with someone who just mm -hmm. had a that that was her path as well. And one of the things I just want to say that I love about what you're offering to the world and what you offer to your clients and your community as well as what's available here to the Edgewalker community, is this is a tribe, a, a community of people who actually, many of us, we have a shared calling or sh we, we're all stepping out on the edge, we're moving out of the box. If we're not, we're on the process of doing it, we've been doing it. So one of the things I love about our Edgewalker community and what you offer is that we create a platform and a safe community where we can all grow individually and collectively. So just yeah, to, so yeah. beautiful, so true. And I think um in my community, when we do sessions, you know, I I I think it's really important for people like us that are holding space. Um, and there's there's probably many teachers and coaches and things here, is that there is a real authenticity about the cold hard truth of living your soul's calling. And right. so and so what it is is it's not easy. And I and I quoted this to you before, and I love it. I've it's in I put this quote in my last book from Coop Blackson. It is neither convenient nor comfortable. Follow your soul's calling. It is never convenient. It's not, and it's not convenient and it's not comfortable. Following. And there is a there is a there's a great kind of you know roses and glory kind of feeling that if I do my soul's calling and I follow these nudges, it's going to be easy and it's going to be green lights all the way and it's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable. We're living in a world where there is hardened energy where there is a predominant vibration of fear, where there are a lot of people who would love for you to follow their agenda, whether it be just people who love you but want you to do a certain thing or at a macro level, you know, government and society and mass media and corporations or whatever it is. And so it is like your um, friend has on her beautiful tombstone as to thy own self be true, is actually like a super courageous thing to do and takes like it takes, we, we in New Zealand say, say it takes balls, excuse my language, it takes balls of steel to be true to yourself. Like it is required so much to go this path. The sub note to that is it has continued to be challenging. I still on a yearly basis go, okay, hang on a minute here. What am I doing? What am I doing out here on my own having these conversations? It would have been a lot easier for me to follow a different path, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. a lot more comfortable and it's again not about like like I threw my career in and I like literally sold everything I owned and I went out on this journey and I built this business and I'm doing it and I'm constantly changing it up and have very little stability and that is really challenging and it's not the degree to which you do it it's the a level of alignment to what it is uniquely for you as a being because for whatever reason that's my soul's calling for whatever reason it's yours and your unique way and everybody else that's here but your soul is absolutely did not come here for stagnancy and as far as life's evolutionary impulse goes the universe's impulse stagnancy essentially is death. right and so when we are not following the impulse and we're not moving the energy and expression 
and we're not following the intuition and the nudges we are holding it back all life wants to do source divinity god creator universe whatever you want to call it by all names we honor it it wants to flow through you and it wants to dance in the world and it just wants to flood through you continuously so you are either going to dam up the river and put the reins on or you're going to open it up and let it go and that's where the courage comes in if I let this out and let it go if I change this job shift this relationship move to that location say this thing that wants to be said what will happen I don't know but probably magic and miracles <laughs> magic, magic and miracles well and and the thing is is that as we express as I is in all the conversations you and I've had and I've as we each align and express that with that soul calling or with our true essence more and more, what we're going to create, express, be, and do, we've never expressed, been, or done before. That's that the un part of the unknowing is we're being and doing something we've never done because we're expanding and evolving. And I, I want to bring up, because you and I talked about this, that some people have more of a humanity calling and some people have more of a self calling. And I think if you don't mind, because every time, each one of us aligns, it helps to shift the world. It helps to shift the larger field. But some people feel more drawn for a humanity calling of their soul and some a self. Tell me if I've got that wrong, but we talked yeah. about that. And I don't know if it's worth to, with that distinction worth maybe touching in on that for a second. I think it's important. I think it's important because it might look like from the outside, like for example, if someone thought that I do what I do for humanity calling, I actually don't. I actually don't like it's largely for my joy and my own self-expression and I know it helps the world so therefore it gives me a deep sense of purpose but if right. you ask me to go to activate on a humanitarian mission I would immediately feel disconnected right like there's not because because I know in myself that I am not thing I am just like I like I could not be here and everything's gonna be fine because source is just moving its energy through whoever is open for it to move through and everyone will get everything they need and so it's not a it's a self-focus for joy and contentment, but it's not a self-focus like I'm I'm important to have to be doing this, if that makes sense. And well, I think it's not selfish. It's actually selfless ultimately, but it's not selfish, as I think it's what you're saying too. In fact, yeah. It's yeah. important that we do this. Mm. Yeah, beautiful. And I think um, this segues nicely to so if so if people want something practical, um, to, to, to go okay well hang on a second here hold up about the courage like what is my soul's calling um I have like a little framework and I can really quickly in a few minutes describe okay. it and then people can go away with it and that is um try on for size that your soul came for four things because no one on this planet can escape them and hardly can it be by mistake so number one is learning number two is healing number three is growth and number four is contribution and so when you think about the fact we're not here by mistake and we've incarnated and most of us have a sense that there is something very divine and magical that is beyond this realm that peeks its way into our life or through our heart from time to time and we sense that's true, we're not from this dimension, then if I came for learning, healing, growth and contribution, look at your life right now and you will see the footprints of it. You will see the ways you're learning. You'll see the ways life pushes all of your buttons, trying to get you to learn your soul lessons, to learn and heal and grow. And then contribution is what people think of as purpose. My contribution, like where is my meaning and how am I giving to the world? And on that last bit on contribution, if all you did was this one thing, your life would unfold like a beautiful path. And that is pay attention to your passions, your inspirations and your intuition. And don't ever deny them and pull the thread on them whenever they show up with courage because you don't know where they're going to lead. And when those things converge, your passions, your intuition and your inspirations are all kind of bubbling and converging, go heavily in that direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, Because it's that is that soulful. So. We literally talk about going with the flow, but it really is going with that flow and trusting it. And I know, you know, you, you've written a few books and there are a lot of your information about your books and what you do is on your BernadetteLogue.com website. But I know a lot of it's about, you know, when we're aligned, not only does the spirit flow through us, but we attract like a magnet, law of attraction, that which is we see the signs, we see the doors opening up, we see our inspirations or the possibility when we're blocking the flow or we're not allowing it to express through us we're it's not just what it's what we can't see what might be right in front of us the next step the next you know nudges the guidance so i think it goes 
sort of both ways. Is that a good way? Totally to does. Mm -hmm. Totally does, right? So we've had lots of fun conversations about how you're mm -hmm. like, okay, spirit, like just last week, spirit, uh, I've got nowhere to live in three weeks. Uh, I've got my suitcase. Where am I going to live? And I could find somewhere. And I was like, okay, there, there has to be something magical within 48 hours. Someone's like, oh, I've got a place. Tell your sister I've got a place. You can go and stay in it. It's, it's just around the corner. It's like wow. perfect unfolding, right? But here is what happens. When you get in deep devotion to this is not the higher reality. Right. Like you and I are going to be on the other side one day going, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we totally took a while to get that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you go, this is real, right? This physical reality is real. All these things are real. But there is a higher truth. And my obsession is my devotion to that higher truth, that that is what's really going on. And then this is one way that that higher dimension is expressing and that we've come to play in this challenging earth school with all this stuff, okay? And so in that, when you, you know, like I had a conversation last night coaching with someone about this. When you, when you're like, I, I am very devoted and I am very spiritually aligned and why hasn't it shown up yet? Why hasn't the thing that I want shown up? Mm -mm. Like, it's like, okay, I'm going to follow the path I have to have absolute unwavering trust and faith because the opposite is a smidgen of doubt and when a smidgen of doubt comes in in comes fear and anxiety and second guessing and we're right back down into I'm in my small self there's no openness there's no channel and so as devoted as we can be to getting up and brushing our teeth cleaning our house doing the grocery shopping like taking care of other people, that's the level of devotion that we want to have to. In the morning, you get up and someone said to me, where do you get your enthusiasm from? And I'm like, I cultivate that enthusiasm. Like, I am going to get up in the morning and I'm like, I am not doing sadness. I am not doing regret. I am not doing shame. I am not doing worry. I'm not doing doubt because it feels terrible and I'm making a choice. Right. I am doing, I am soul, I am source, I am faith, divinity is showing itself to me. I'm going in this direction. I'm trusting. Everything always works out. You know, and putting yourself in community where you and I will talk and you'll be like, don't forget, mm -hmm. always right. everything in the highest good. And, I, and, like, oh, okay. yeah. right? and so you need the people, you need to be here at Each Walker Cafe every single time Judy and Patricia and Susan run this. You need to be here because it's the constant remembrance. Mm -hmm. And truth. I think the other thing to align with your soul's calling and to stand up and have the courage, you mentioned faith, but it's also letting go of control. Like a lot of us, yeah. you know, where who are we're leaders, we're managers, we're coaches, we're we're navigating, where you know, there is a level of really surrendering yeah. and letting go of control and trusting and and you know and and making you said making a choice, which to me is a consciousness, it's a conscious choice. It is a decision. And it's, it's something a, like a moment to moment decision. But it's so it's sort of surrendering, mm -hmm. letting go of control and then making a conscious choice to follow this path and to show up and to trust because we're really not yeah. in control. I mean, I'm reforming control freak, you know, so I, yeah, yeah. Journey. Right. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And when you, and that conscious choice is like people, like when I'm talking to people that aren't spiritual, they'll be like, but, but like, what about all of this? And I'm like, well, just forget about it being spiritual for a minute. Like, how do you want to feel on a daily basis? Right. They're like, well, I want to feel peace. I want to, well, you need to make that choice. Like, and you need to make that choice every day because you make that choice once on your yoga mat or meditation pillow and you go out into the world. Have you seen the world? That world is going to trigger you. So you've got to make that choice every morning, every lunchtime, every evening about how am I going to be? And that's where we build the muscles in our psychology and in our nervous system to get ourselves consciousness, mind, emotions, heart, body aligned to our soul. So that our soul is not this idea and divorced from the reality of trudging around in this world, but becomes like an integrated thing. Right. So we say, okay, what's my mind doing on a daily basis? Well, if your mind is running literally con contradictory statements to I am soul, I am source, I am supported, I am loved, I am purposeful, then your job is, and I say this to people all the time in my mind mastery work, is that your job is to provide loving leadership to your mind, to your emotions, to your nervous system, to your body, like to parent yourself into alignment. 
because mm -hmm. no one else can be there to do it for you all the time because everyone's doing it for themselves. <laughs> exactly. I, I posted something on Facebook for Valentine's Day about self-love. It really wasn't about loving your partner because ultimately we can't give what we don't have. So if we want to love our community and love our clients and love our partners and our families and our whatever our purpose is, if we're not cultivating that first here, we don't have it to give out there. That's the thing. I mean, it really has to come from the center first you know, the self and exactly. there. Exactly. And just going back to what you said about control, I'm sure if we asked people and we asked for a show of hands, there would be a lot of hands up about control. And the one thing that I um, learned about that most recently, not realizing that that was a central theme of my soul lessons, um, that took a long time to get that lesson, uh, was I got shown in a spiritual quest for what happens when you control and what happens when you let go. And the visual imagery was when you control, everything turns to gray concrete. Wow. There's it's no life. Density. It's devoid of life, completely devoid of life. And when you let go and you lean on what I call sit back, take your hands off, sit back, and that requires the trust and courage to do that, it explodes with light. Like oh, literally yeah. life force energy explodes through you into your heart, your work, your cooking, your gardening, your writing, your business, your relationships, whatever it is, just becomes filled with this flowing energy, which is light. Mm -hmm. And when we stick our hands on like this, and this is part of the soul journey. It's not, not meant to be that way. It's that's learning the lesson of letting go. That's learning the lesson of who am I really? And can I be awake now before I get to the other side and go, ah, oh, that's what it was about. <laughs> well, and I know, and I, I think, you know, depending on where whoever's on the call today and, you know, we're all meant to be here right now, wherever you are on your journey, um, I know, and some people may relate to this, and I'm not so much here now because I'm pretty soul identified, but I was also working, I've been working with clients and I know in myself, if I think back even 10, 15 years ago, the battle was constant within myself because I was still kind of ego personality identified. And yet I was moving into my connecting with my spiritual essence. And there was this like, this like death I had to go to of my old identity. And it doesn't mean I was coaching then and I'm coaching now, but I was identified by the old constructs, the old conditioning, the old beliefs of who I thought I was. And looking back, I'm like, oh my God, that was so not who I was. And it's not a judgment, but it's there's more spaciousness and more freedom. But that that's an edge when you're kind of mm -hmm. up against your own I, what you think is your identity and realize it's not who I am. There's sort of like a sort of a death that goes on to the ego mind. And I mean, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I thought I had the death of the self, the beginning of my journey. And I'm like, yeah. now I just laugh. It's like, oh, the, you and I have laughed about this. Like, oh, yeah, gosh. Yeah. Oh, how, how naive. But um, but I had a huge death of self and a death of a lot of things around me in my life all crumbling about 18 months ago. And it's extremely painful. But in the middle of it, this is faith. This is this is where your spiritual practice comes in. In the depth of that, literally sobbing on the floor. Mm -hmm. was the voice that says this is meant to be happening this is meant to be happening because mm -hmm. what is not aligned cannot sustain right mm -hmm. and there is an element like we have seasons of our lives so that season that you described of your life was perfect because that was that season of your journey until there was a evolution a quickening to a new a new level of you and it's hard when you do break through and you look back and you have, like I had immense shame, immense regret, immense emotions about, oh my gosh, I thought I was awake. Oh my gosh, what was I doing? Oh my God. And it's like, this is the journey of honoring that I am a little caterpillar and then I am dissolved in the cocoon and then I've got wings, but I don't know how to use them. And then, and so we, we are morphing and evolving through these seasons and those deaths are necessary and it's the willingness to let go of your identity when you have no idea who you really are I've had people literally say to me I've finally seen the reason I won't leave this relationship or this job or I won't actually do the work to heal my mind it's because I don't know who I would be without this without it. right exactly and that's the thing if you're externally identified and then it means having to leave anything and I've seen that and I've done that myself until I get hit over the head enough I'm like okay I'm going to break this pattern I'm going to let it go but you're going into a void but it's a void of light because the 
the identity the identity with that um patterning let's say of who I thought I was was sort of killing me emotionally spiritually physically yeah. I mean, it's dis-ease on a lot of levels so who, yeah. who will I be but that's where the faith and the courage comes in that's where literally the leap you know the leap into the unknown. yeah yeah because if we have what if we know where we're going we're going the same way right we know what if we know where we're going we're literally repeating our past that is that is embodied in us as memory and patterning and conditioning and we are forging our mind made path and the old joke is you know we make plans and god laughs so it's like what like can we see that some of the greatest things in our lives have evolved out of us not engineering it like the way we meet the loves of our life the way we meet great friends you and i like the way that we've had business opportunities come up or career opportunities or whatever it is it's never been engineered by your personality self never not once and right. people say, well, I engineered my children because I showed up and I made my children. I'm like, you did not make your children. <laughs> Divinity <laughs> made your children and you participated in the recipe and that is it, right? right. So it's like this, when we when we can say, um, like, can we stand on the planet and just throw our hands up and go, I don't know. Like, right. It's probably the honest, the most honest truth that we could speak is like, throw your hands up and go, I don't know, use me and move me. You know, uh, Richard Moss, who is a great spiritual teacher and author and has been transformational, uh, his work has been, and retreats have been transformational for me. I'm paraphrasing his quote, but he said the the full experience of God is ultimately, I don't know. Like he says, that's the experience of God is, I don't know. And that's scary to not know, but it's also exciting and full of possibility and full of what's next in wonder it's all in how you want magic you know all in how you magic want to... miracles like Miracle. the field of possibility like i just say uncertainty is the field of possibilities and when i am facing uncertainty i don't know where i'm going to live i don't know what's happening with this i don't know what's happening with that i don't know what i should do next even in the depths of my i know what i'm here for when i have moments like i'm like well actually what if i just let go of everything what if again i let go of everything and i say i don't know anything then what can come through what well, Anything and everything can come through from the no thing of the nothingness of the field of just pure energy and divine intelligence, then from nothing can come everything. But we are in a society which glorifies knowing. And so it's very challenging to stand in the world for your ego and personality self to go, oh, hey, I'm Bernadette, I don't know anything. <laughs> we don't want to hang out, right? And it's like, but actually that is the most gracious, humble, beautiful, open channel vessel that you can be for life force to move you for your benefit and everyone else's benefit when you don't cling on to it has to be a certain way and spirit said to me in the middle of the night when I was literally on my down on my knees breakdown um of identity to go to a new level and I could kind of feel that that's what was happening as everything in me and around me was dissolving so I could go to a new level and I just heard one word and I woke up in the middle of the night and they said capitulate you need to like literally yield like just yield and that is the opposite of human nature is to just literally lay down and say may the highest good be done and move me and like all the hairs on my neck are standing up right now and it's like that level of and I want to cry about it because it's really yeah, painful no, to do when all you want to do like you know because I've we had yeah. fun conversations at that time all you want to do is for the love of God like give me something to hang on to here please can I just hang on and they're like stop hanging on let go let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. Mm -hmm. And when you're challenged by your health or relationship or career or money or whatever it is, all you want to do is figure it out. Right, figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then here's what you do. You make space and then you go, well, I've been making space for 48 hours and nothing's happened. Right. I better. <laughs> we laugh I now. It's not, it's not funny when you're. Now. Right, right, exactly. So, But it's uh, not funny when you're in the middle of it. No, it's not at all. So I'm, I'm. It's, I'm wondering, um, because I do want to allow a good, maybe 10 or 15 minutes if anybody has any questions, because this is, and we so do have people, so, and I think also many of us feel a quickening and, and an urgency, uh, Judy, did you? Uh, yeah, there's several people who have questions. Right. Okay. Um, so I, Bernadette, if we can maybe move into a place where we have some questions, I can't see the whole board, okay. but. Can you see, maybe, Judy, you want to call on people since I can't Yes, see uh, yes I'm happy to, to get you us. You okay with that, Bernadette? Does that feel yeah, good? Yeah, fun. That sounds fun. Perfect. 
Okay, so uh, Lisa Elliott has um, some reflections and a question that she can also share a little bit about her own experience regarding this okay. question. So Lisa, over to you. Over to well, you. For calling on me first, Judy. <laughs> I am Lisa. <laughs> so, so one of the things that I'm coming into realization, and it's it's really because I'm beginning to work with, as a coach, beginning to work with people around their soul's calling, their vocation, and their dharma. And what I'm beginning to recognize is that um, for me, it was more of a dark night of the soul experience for me and, and, and several iterations of that. Um, but for some people, it's just really sitting and asking life-affirming questions or visioning and realizing that they're already in it and, and, and not aware of it. So I just want, I, I, I think sometimes when I hear these conversations, it always, it always sounds like, to, to use a partner if anyone is offended by this, but tarot card metaphor, the tower moment, the tower mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. tarot card, where it's always this big surprise, this explosive thought, you know, I'm divorcing my husband, I've thrown out the dog, mm -hmm. I'm not talking to my kids, and I'm I'm in the woods, ball headed. And it's not, it's not always mm -hmm. all of that. Sometimes it's just breathing and recognizing right where you are and having that gratitude of right where you are. That is your soul's calling. So. Beautiful. So true. Can I just speak to that for a moment? Because that's so powerful. Um, you know, people often say, I'm trying to find my purpose. I'm like, if your heart's beating in your hair, you're already living your purpose. Because you can't not, because you're learning, you're healing, you're growing. And from the day you're born, you're contributing because your little baby self has already affected all these people by just arriving in your glory, right? And so, you know, some of the women in my community, like just last week, someone joined in and said, I've just realized that I'm in my purpose already. And my purpose is this way that I hold energy and I'm a listener. I'm like, that's absolutely it. It's not some, like I'm going to invent some technology that's going to save the planet or I've got to go and do this great big thing. For some people, it's gardening. That's their soulful self-expression and that's their contribution. For some people, it's, you know, coaching someone to help find their dharma. For some people, it's holding the energy and it's being in a state of consciousness and how that affects other people. So I really love that you said that because I have a love-hate relationship with the self-help industry and in that it's kind of like self-help, self-harm because what it does is it torments people. Like sometimes people come to me and I'm like, just stop all of it. Like incl including, I'm not going to give you any because because this whole seeking path and I've done that seeking path and I'm sure if we all put our hand up, there's been a lot of people that will put their hand up and said, I've sought constantly for something outside of me when actually it's the old saying from the book, The Alchemist, he goes out on the journey and ends up back under the same tree, right? The gold is within. So I really appreciate you saying that because quite often people are feeling like it does need to be some green thing. And actually often it's right under our nose as these very subtle, nuanced moments of intuition, moments of grace with our inspirations and our ideas and the ways that we want to feel fully expressed in life. So I love that, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, Judy, anyone else that you can? Christina Chambliss. Christina, are you still Hi. here? Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, lovely. Hi, how are you, B? I'm good. Um, one of the things that I struggle with is I, I, I'm trying to do the surrender. And um, and I feel that I am. Uh, but at the same time, then I'm always questioning Am I being, am I not taking action when I should be taking action? Like how do, how, what is the interplay between action and surrender? Perfect. Uh, do you want to answer that, Patricia, or do you want me to, or do you want both to? <laughs> no, go ahead, Bernadette. I was just. Okay. Okay. So, um. So first of all, that's a beautiful question and it's a really confusing one of the many contradictions in spirituality and self-help. Oh, but I'm meant to be the creator of my life. Oh, but I'm meant to be completely surrendered. And it's like there's many versions of these polar opposites that are super confusing for people. So um, what I suggest is this, is think about surrendered action. So we can take action. Um, I love this from the Tao Te Ching, is like, 
right action. Can you be still until right action arises? And then when you take that action, you take it knowing it's the thing to do and you take it from a state of peaceful allowing instead of, I've got to take action and I'm taking action from this really like not forcing place, but this very attached place. So that's one idea is when you actually take action, you can be taking surrendered action because surrender is just a state of being. It's like just a state of allowing. It's not being attached and holding on to things. The other thing is, is when it comes to taking action, I'm going to propose to you that you know, Christina, what action needs to be taken. And if an action is a right action for you to take, like deep within, but we get in our mind about it. So um, what is the next most obvious step for me to be meeting life halfway for me to be meeting life in the field like if I have a goal or I have a challenge I need to overcome if I was to be fully participating like fully accountable fully responsible and doing the things that I know would support me and help me and put me in action with life's flow then what might those things be and then there is a very different energy to well I feel like I should do this and it's like I'm going to force myself and make myself but don't confuse that with fear. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, if you asked me to go and do, like, write a book right now, I'm like, oh, my, no, I'm done with that right now. I don't, I don't want to. That's not right action for me right now. I've just written one. I don't want to write another one right now. Like, that's not right action for me. But if you ask me to go and um, speak on stage to a thousand people, I'm like, okay, that terrifies me. Um, but that's a right action because that's an opening that would align to me being in flow of what I love to do, which is connecting with more people. So you have to kind of, it's very nuanced. Okay, so think about your situation right now. You know if you're in surrendered state because you feel peaceful inside. Mm -hmm. And then from that place, what things do I need to do? Because I'm really hot on practicality. Spirituality is not sitting back on the couch, meditating and feeling all peaceful and going, and life is just going to unfold for me. It's like, like what if your like soul lessons are learning discipline and confidence and connection with other people and life wants you to get up and get into life and face your fears of those things, but do that from a place of peaceful, allowing, not forcing, right? I don't know if you've got anything else you want to add to that, Patricia, around surrender versus action. Oh, I think I just said it's doing from a place of being. Most of us do and then to have things and then we could be somebody that's the kind of the western of the a different model where it's really about doing from your beingness and then you can i'm gonna say have what you want but then you can create and manifest what you want so it's just another way of putting it so i would just say yeah. that and then open yeah up. and i i think that one other small thing on that is and i'm also really hot on this is i'm just really like about practical practical reality of life and um, when you want to achieve things in your life and they feel inspired and passionate for you, often it's not easy. No. It's just not easy. And like the number of like, I said to my community the other day, if you knew how much work and things that I've had to do that are outside my comfort zone that I have had to do in order to create my life to be the way it is, you'd probably be like, what? And it's like, it's not like roses and glory and flowing and easy. It's been super challenging and it has literally evolved me to have to do it. Like it's basically forced me to become the new proper true unfiltered authentic version of me to do that so it's not that we sit around waiting until everything aligns and it all feels easy and there's green lights and we don't have any fear it's just the way we're coming about it like Patricia says is that your state of being inside is in trust and is in ease and then you're acting from that state on what feels right and sometimes side note you don't know what's right to do but you just kind of take your best guess sometimes because that's all there is available. From where I stand right now, I don't need to know 10 steps or 100 steps. I just need to know the next most obvious step. And if I pull the thread from a place of trust and ease and willingness, then things will unfold and I'll be clear who to call, what to ask, what to do, where to go. So it's that kind of um, micro step right. that you can take. That's very helpful and very practical. Great question. Thank you. Yeah. And I Thank think we have time for um, one more. Mm -hmm. And um, but there's lots of beautiful comments in the chat. And if anyone wants to save the chat, um, when you go to the chat on the lower right hand side, with in the chat box, 
there are three dots. And if you, oh, that's not what's, well, there's a down arrow. There's some, there is a place where you can pull up. I, gotta, I actually have to look at this myself. Um, no, it's not showing. No, you're right. You're right, Judy. Uh, okay, there, where the, there should be three dots. And when you pull down on that, it says save chat. And from the time when you hit that, it won't save anything afterwards. So I suggest if you want to save the chat, do that just before you log off, and then you will get loaded up to your computer. And I perfect. And I want to make sure Bernadette BernadetteLogue.com right is your website, yeah. Bernadette. So if anyone wants to connect with you or learn about your books and your programs and your free offers and everything. Um, it actually was in the email and the promotional piece, but we can also put it in the chat. I don't see the chat from where I am, but okay. Yeah, I can put it in. But I wanted to give Gary Averill a chance to say something because he just typed something in that, that really touches me about the two worlds, Gary, that you are walking in. And um, one of the things in the chat is how much today's conversation for many people has really resonated and touched them deeply. And oh, Gary, I'm, I'm really feeling that from what you've shared. And I wonder if you would be okay with sharing it. And it's okay if you're not, but uh, if you would not want to speak your the thing situation. I'm really trying to talk about is that there's two things. One, I call this new age. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just giving it a name. Um, there is no church, but they all have, I mean, I can walk anywhere and talk to somebody who is in this realm, and we can talk the same language. There's no doctrinal. That's really, really neat. But I walk in two worlds now. God put me back in 2014 in the Pentecostal evangelical realm. I've been there for seven years. Once in a while, I have to uh, take a retreat so I can get back to my roots. But what gets me is the pain of how, if any of us try to talk to an evangelical or Pentecostal, it can't be done because we're evil. Because we believe, you know, you know, it's um, it's not biblically based. And one thing I'd love to see is somehow I don't think there's ever a way for us to come together. And I wish, I mean, to them. I'm this wonderful, beautiful person, one of the, a very deep Pentecostal. But at the moment I tell them that I'm new age, I'm gone. I've lost it. Mm. That's very heartbreaking. Very heartbreaking. I really hear you. Can I speak to that a little bit? Maybe offer. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, I've had, I've literally had people cut me off for the same reason is you're just not on the planet with me and you are contradictory to my faith and belief system and I think the thing is that one of the greatest things you can do for the healing of that energetically is simply to hold the remembrance that there is no separation so at a soul level there is no separation you and I are the same being Gary you and those Pentecostal evangelical friends are the same energy are the same source we are literally rays of light from the sun and that is the absolute non-physical, unseen, energetic, divine truth. And so you can hold the remembrance of that of for them. That is not going to be their journey in this dimension, in this lifetime. So in this lifetime, they have incarnated to come and walk this path. And they are experiencing all of the things around learning, healing, growth, evolution, contribution inside that model. But for you, it's like, can we hold love for them despite where they're at and the cutting off of us? This separation, what happens is we come into the world, we come from absolute oneness. There is no body, there is no thing, there is no personality, there is none of this. And then we immediately experience the great separation. Now I am in physical reality and I'm dropped into a body and I see myself as separate to you. Then we have a triple, double split. Our mind splits off. Oh, not only am I separate from you, but you are evangelical, Buddhist, like political leaning and we start to do it and we are now splitting off at all levels and the return to your soul inside the dream of life to waken inside the dream of life as you have and to now be um, in your soul remembrance is to heal the separation 
and it's your gift to just be present in the world with people that are saying those things and cutting you off in that way and hold the remember that they are you and you are them and to be able to feel that in your heart like that in itself is a massive massive healing contribution but the thing is is that we have to have the absolute detachment that they will understand anything about that <laughs> Well, and, and can I say something is that when I witness, whether it's, you know, different religions, I mean, we see this all the time, different races, genders, whatever it might be. And this is not a judgment, but it's that when the more we are spirit, soul identified, aligned, the less we're threatened by people that are different or look different or say different things, the more we are identified, I'm speaking generally, by my conditioning, my beliefs, my labels, whatever, when someone or something shows up, I and mean, we all know this, that reflects back something that's different, we reject it, we attack it, we go away from it because it's a threat to our identity. You know, it's more, and I don't mean ego like conceited, but you know, they say ego means easing God out. You know, that stands for that, and and that, um, and there, and that's we see that out pictured all over the world. I mean, it's everywhere. I mean, so um, I just want to build on what you said, and I think when we can just hold that space and know that that person is us and vice versa, even if we don't speak it, but it's difficult. It can be very painful. And people the thing is that I'm see seeing right now that's important. One of the things I'm really dealing with, can the human body be evil, but the spirit is beautiful, but they have to observe what the body is doing, but do not have power to overcome it and that is that then makes it that this world is more of a play not a uh, it's not about the spirit itself the spirit is still beautiful and wonderful and that's that's a real, I know that I know that's very uh, um very controversial i think um just well you know like just great respect to you for raising challenging questions and like i can see you're like processing like how am i how do i reconcile these things and um you know the second we are going this is good and this is evil and that is right and this is wrong and that is high and that is low and this is good and this is bad it's this like radical viewpoint if true is if truth is true, then it's always true. So if you say God is love and everything is God, divinity is love and everything is divinity, then there is none of that. Mm -hmm. There is no, there is literally none of that. And it's like, but that is extremely controversial to say to somebody when you see horror and when you see terrible traumatic things happening and you see people behaving a certain way. And it's this, how do we reconcile inside of ourselves if love is the foundation and the truth and yes, fear is very real in this realm because we are deep inside a dream of life and people are going to live from their conditioning and their paradigms through the generations and ancestry and experiences. How do we stay in this remembrance and awareness? Like we need to be able to, if we want to walk in our soul's alignment and our soul knows the truth, that love is love and there's nothing else, then when we sit with people, and they are, but your body is evil and that thing you're doing is evil. There has to be a complete acceptance of, I love this person. This person is me and I am them. And here's what I do. I don't know if it's useful or not. Patricia may have a different view. But I literally say inside myself when I'm with people that are really confronting or challenging, that are abusing, like are very abusive toward me, like you shouldn't be saying that, you should be this, you should be that. It's like you are me and I am you. And I love you and I don't need to know you to love you because I know where you came from and I know I came from the same place. And so I'm just going to honor where you're at on your soul journey and you may not wake inside the stream of life and that may be absolutely divinely perfect for your lifetime, but it's like, can you bring what you know to be your higher truth to those situations, Gary? Like, can you say what I know in the bones of my being and in my heart, how do I apply that when I'm facing these right. contradictory beliefs and perspectives? Thank you, Brenda. And not to take it personally, which is very difficult sometimes. I guess it's right. Right. so yeah thank you so much gary 
and we don't have time for any other questions, but I'll make a few quick announcements. Is that's okay, Patricia? Yeah, and I, I just want to- Then you and and um, you and you um, B can make your last comments after okay, I- Okay, sure. Go ahead, Judy, please. Okay, great. So, um, oh golly, we're so glad you're all here. This was really special. And I, I know people have been touched deeply and have much to share with others around this concept. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Bernadette, for um, this powerful conversation. And um, our next Edgewalker Cafe is March 14th, so a month from now. And uh, I will be hosting Shadrick Mazaza from South Africa, who will be speaking about the connection between personal transformation and the transformation of Africa as one consciousness. So I hope you'll join us. And if you're not a part of, uh, if you're not subscribed to the Edgewalker newsletter, I encourage you to do that if you'd like to know more about future cafes and other offerings. Um, and you can do that on our website, edgewalkers.org. And uh, also, for those of you who are wanting to know more about what qualities and skills you are really strong in that will help you to live your soul's calling more deeply, we have assessments on the Edgewalker website that you can explore. Um, and the last thing I wanna share is, uh, this is my new book, this is my 10th book, and Bernadette, I'm like you, I'm like, that's it, I'm done, no more books. But it was a delight to put this book together. It's called Inspiring Workplace Spirituality. And it is a collection of essays I've written over the last 20 years. And one small section actually has profiles of different business leaders who are edge walkers. It tells their stories. Um, so you can get that on Amazon or emerald.com. And it's Emerald Publishing. So that's it for my announcements. And Patricia, thank you so much for inviting Bernadette. What a yeah. treat. And, and well, just a true edge walker. And, and um, first of all, congratulations, Judy. Your books are amazing, you know, still with edge walkers and from there on. So congratulations on that. But, um, you know, Bernadette, it's, uh, I'm just so grateful to, for who you are and who you're being and your courage and our connection and what you brought today. And this is recorded, right, Judy? So if people want to hear it again, I mean, there was so much deep information and it'll be on the website, right? Edgewalkers.org. That's where they'll be able to find it when, yes. once recorded. Just so people And we also have a YouTube channel, an Edgewalker YouTube channel. So you can find it either place. Okay, thank you. And Bernadette, is there anything you want to share with the group about any programs or anything you have that's coming up or... Anything at all? Any closing remarks? I've just, we've just done some events recently. We don't have any live things coming up, but you can jump over to BernadetteLive.com and I've got like a free masterclass where we go really deep into like aligning to your soul. I've got a free guide there and other resources that are all available for you to access immediately if you want to learn more. And my book, probably the easiest and quickest thing is my book that I published last year, Your Soul Journey Simplified, which is like a really practical, methodical framework for getting into alignment, understanding uh, with questions and prompts, uh, you know, how to really connect in with who you are beyond this physical and why you're here and how to start activating that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, thank you my dear, dear friend. This was really timely and um, inspiring and, and important, you know, important work. So thank you for being with I'm us. Grateful. Everyone, we had a wonderful turnout today for making the time to be with us and we look forward to send, um, seeing you all next month.